So welcome new viewers and subscribers uh, to the Kenny hack and variable tests I'm running. Uh, not really messing with the Kenny hack solution today. Uh, I might try it on this material at another date. Uh, this is burlap on, on a frame. This happened to be going in Hobby Lobby and seen a couple of these boards laying around and I haven't ever really seen anybody trying to do images on burlap, so I thought I'd give it a try, see what kind of results I can produce. Um, did a couple test boards, kind of found, found some rough settings on the grayscale that uh, initially looked promising, so trying a little bigger piece. You can see I started on the bottom. And the light end of the scale was coming up just a little too light. So I stopped it, started, uh, raised the bottom end of the scale up another 2.5%. Uh, I haven't done a lot of work with the gray scale, trying to figure that out. I think if you really want to produce really great images, you really have to start trying to figure out that gray scale so you can precisely cut off the black and cut off the bottom of the white scale and just be running everything in between. Um, it probably takes a lot of work. I've seen a lot of people that produce really high quality images and they very rarely will give out their secrets. You know, they probably put a lot of work into figuring everything out and they probably just don't want to give out all that information just for everybody kind of feel like if you want to learn it you have to learn how to do it uh, so you really understand what's going on um, I'll kind of give you my results and what I've learned so far and we can learn it together if you're subscribed and following um, just see how he comes out uh, won't bother making you watch the whole thing. I'm going to try to come back uh, 15 minutes before it ends and cut it off before it doubles up on the bottom of that image. And we'll see what the final product is. Another quick update for you people that have been subscribed and following some of the stuff I'm experimenting with. This is kind of a... It was a little demo board I made up. I had burned some of it and decided I wanted to change some settings, so I flipped it around and tried something different. You see, this is running at 5,000 millimeters per minute, 35% power, 085 line resolution with the Jarvis. I put a little note on there that I probably should turn it down to 30%. There was a little brush off on the black that was overburnt. Um, added a few steps to my process as far as like it's not just the Kenny hack solution it kind of starts with that right now this is on the 12 percent solution I really probably could go down to like a five or six percent solution and still get good results at pretty high speeds you can see I'm only at 35 percent and still turning it really dark and black it's it's no problem burning the wood at that speed it's more balanced, like every wood you try it on, it's going to be slightly different. So when you, if you find a wood that's giving you really great results, probably stick with that kind of wood so you can really dial it in. If you, you, These are just little cheap little demo boards just to kind of work different things out on. So if you're trying this at home, you made up a batch of the solution, you know, get some of these so you can kind of figure out how things work. Try different different tests, and once you're comfortable with that, move on to better quality wood to where you can really dial stuff in and make a little better product overall in the end. For as cheap of wood as this is, this is a cheap little pine board from Walmart. Um, you can see how dark it's turning out at such a high speed and low power. Um, I'm really thinking about trying this weekend doing a 9,000 millimeter per minute test. That is the maximum speed these uh, diodes, at least the Orter Master 2, is programmed to run. 
it's no way recommended that you try it. I might damage my machine. I'm going to set it up to do a big long pass. So it's working the whole board and it's not doing any quick direction changes. That would definitely shake the whole frame apart, shake it, move it around. You can see I usually clamp it in so it can't move. But that's uh, something I'm thinking about working on. Just give it a try. If I ruin my machine, it cost me 300 bucks. It might be worth it just for the entertainment. I really think these diodes, if giving a pre-treatment to make the wood burn better, that these these 20 watt diodes can be pushed to the 9,000 millimeters per minute or 150 millimeters per second to where you could use the whole board, the whole working frame to make a big project. Instead of taking nine hours, you can maybe knock it down to three hours. But that would take the developers to create a more sturdy frame and a, a better circuit system that could handle that kind of speed. When you start running up into higher speeds, the machine will start to stutter. When it first takes off, it'll kind of be jerky back and forth. And I think that's just the G code getting sent to the machine. When it's operating at such a higher speed, it kind of overloads it for like the first 15, 20 seconds until it gets all the G code sent to the machine and it quits buffering and then you'll see the machine start running smooth again. So if you're trying this out at home and it starts doing that, I have noticed that uh, happen quite a bit, especially burning image quality. It's a lot of data to buffer into the machine in the higher speeds. It might just take a little longer to buffer and it kind of makes the stepper motor stutter a little bit. It's been happening to me quite regularly. I just kind of expect it anymore. Um, so for you, those of you that might be trying the Kenny Hack solution at home, if that's happening, it's been pretty common for me so far. I haven't noticed any other problems besides that, and it doesn't seem to affect the quality of the work that it's doing while it's stuttering. It just goes a little slower, but it will buffer out and start running smooth after about 30 seconds. So, uh, from there, I'll get back to you once this thing's done cutting, and we'll kind of see how burlap turns out. Right now, I got this running at 3,800 millimeters per minute. It says 80% power, but that's on the top end of the scale. The bottom end of the scale is set at 7.5% on the gray scale. So we'll see how it turns out. If this one turns out good, I got a really big canvas to do almost a full frame burn and see how long it takes, how it turns out. And maybe that'll be for later. Well, we're just kind of exploring burlap, seeing what it can do for right now. Another useful tip I'll give you that a lot of people ask me in some of the forum pages, you know, people that are just starting out, um, they don't understand how to flip the cut orientation. Like I said, I started this project working from the bottom up, made a changes, flipped it to go from the top down, and I'll stop it before it gets to the overlap. Where you do that in light burn anyways, uh, you'll have to forgive me, I'm uh, just starting out making these videos, I don't have the screen capture stuff yet set up. If I get enough likes and followers to make it worthwhile, I'll start worrying a little bit more about my uh, production values. You'll have to kind of bear with me for now, just seeing if this thing ever takes off and get enough followers to make it worthwhile. Um, but where you change that is go to the image and change that scan angle. So right now I got it set at 180 and as the arrows show that starts at the top and works its way down. If you change that to negative 90 now it will work from the left going to the right.
You set in 90 degrees, now it's going from right to left. And the standard setting is zero, and that's from the bottom up. So if you're ever having a problem and you want to make just a minor change and you don't want to have to burn over the whole project again if it's kind of somewhat of a demo board and you don't maybe mind a slight transition point, do like I did on this one. Stop it. Make your slight change. Reverse the cutting order. And then just be ready to stop it when it meets, meets back up with where you initially started. In middle, because if, if you double burn something, it will definitely stand out. If you cut it down to just maybe one or two lines of overlap, it'll probably be pretty hard to see. So, I've had people ask me how to do that on the orientation. So, any of you uh, subscribers and f people just watching for the first time, if you're new like me and you have a lot of questions, because you know, you kind of have to learn light burn on your own. Um, and there's a lot of videos out there to help do that, but I've just had a couple people asking me that in the last couple days in the forums on how to do that because it is handy and you can do some different things with that if you, if you want to change a project or go over a second part of the object again without burning the whole deal. So, all right, we'll get back to you at the end. So there's the final product. Uh, really happy with how it turned out for my first try on burlap and kind of really my first try at using the grayscale. Uh, I think for a first time demo, I think uh, pretty successful on both. I think the settings could maybe use a little tweaking, maybe uh, edit the photo a little bit to kind of take down the darkness and kind of bring out the mid tones a little more. Uh, that would take a lot more practicing. This was just to see what it could do. Uh, hope you learned something. Hope you learned to uh, like and share, comment, uh, subscribe. It all helps. Um, thanks for watching.